So will the winter of 2025 and 2026 be more active than usual when it comes to the amount of snowstorms you'll see? Well, it really depends, but there is a new indication that could give us a better idea of whether or not it's going to be snowier than normal in the United States. And one of those things is about taking a look at the Siberian snow cover for the month of October because that does play a major role in determining if um, whether or not we're going to see a lot of snow typically during the winter time for the United States. And um, typically to summarize it, more snow cover over um, Siberia typically leads to a little bit more of a stratospheric warming of the polar vortex right around the October um, or right around the winter time frame. And a weaker polar vortex means more jet stream dips and more snowstorms right over the United States while less snow cover does the opposite. The reason why more snow cover in Siberia um, induces a little bit more polar of a weaker polar vortex is that it strengthens the Siberian high thanks to that cooler denser air mass that would be associated with a little bit more snow cover and that does lead to a little bit more of a stratospheric warming earlier on in the winter time and it is the month of June we are still definitely ways away from the month of October so you're probably wondering why are we talking about this right now we're still months away well the reason why is because of course it's still all speculation at this time we're still months away but we could get a good idea of the climate we're gonna see in October by taking a look at the drought monitor over Siberia right now which I think could give an indication of whether or not or how um, expansive the snow cover will be over Siberia. Here's the current drought monitor for the pretty much the entirety of the world for May 2025 and if we were to take a look at Siberia which encompasses in almost the entirety of Russia we see that we do have some areas where they are experiencing more rainfall than usual while we do have some a little bit more isolated areas where you are a little bit more in a drought more so right around the west or the eastern portion of Siberia however based on what I'm seeing it seems like there are more areas where it's a little bit more moist than usual rather than drier than usual and you're probably wondering how does the precipitate or um, how do the drought conditions in May affect the type of conditions or the snow cover we're going to see in March over the Siberia area. So the reason why I bring this up is because if there's a drought, it's going to be very difficult to get rid of that drought months away. As simply for a drought to exist in the first place, we need to see that um, we need to see a pretty consistent amount of dry conditions over a prolonged period. So so chances are if you're in a drought it's unlikely to go away for the foreseeable future um so the fact that a lot of siberia isn't under a drought and if anything is receiving more precipitation than usual would mean that it's more likely to be a little bit cooler than normal thanks to the fact that the ground is a little bit more moist so a lot of the short wave radiation from the sun would be absorbed by a lot of the groundwater or the surface water that would exist in areas where there's a bit more um, moisture um, compared to a drought. So I do believe that this could contribute to potentially um, a stronger amount of, sn of a snow extent, not only because the it will likely be cooler if there wasn't a drought over Siberia, but also because... Um, more precipitation, of course, if that trend were to continue, would lead to that higher possibility of snowfall um, right over Siberia. So that's suddenly something we're going to take a look at over the next few months. This could, this is definitely, um, take this with a grain of salt because this is heavy speculations because we have seen plenty of droughts in the past go away fairly rapidly. But based on the conditions we've been seeing over the past several months, it's a bit more likely that we would see potentially a little bit more of a snow cover extent over Siberia, at least compared to normal, thanks to the cooler than average conditions induced by the stronger amount of surface moisture along the surface, as well as the fact that just typically a more moist, um, con uh, moist climate we've been seeing over the past several months would lead to that higher possibility of precipitation and a good amount of that precipitation could fall in the form of snowfall so i do believe this could 
this will contribute to the um, this winter having a little bit more of a weaker polar vortex, a little bit more of a stratospheric warming, and that will allow for more snowfall as well as cold blasts to move into the United States this winter. Here's a quick look at the height anomalies for the winters that had October snow ext um, extent um, over Siberia in the month of October. That uh, the pretty much the most expansive um, snow air extents we've seen in Siberia, the top five, and we clearly see that the height anomalies during those years bring a lot more cooler than average temperatures over the United States over much of Europe as well. While we see in the polar regions, it's a lot warmer than normal, which makes sense because a polar vortex typically during expansive. Uh, snow extent years during the month of October over Siberia would lead to uh, much more of a stratospheric warming and weaker polar vortexes that would bring that warm air a lot further northward into the polar regions while the jet stream dips would bring that cooler air further southward into the United States so I do believe this will contribute to a stronger than usual winter when it comes to winter storms and cold air right over the United States. But what do you guys think? Make sure to comment down below if you believe that this speculation when it comes to the drought conditions over Siberia will play a major role by the time we approach October and determining how expansive that snow extent will be by that time. Make sure to comment down below if you think that this will contribute to it or if you have other ideas um, um, regarding how this winter will turn out because I'd love to hear them. Um, I'm just like you guys. I'm learning more and more about what affects the winter in general. So make sure to comment down below if you have any ideas of what could potentially lead to maybe a snowier winter for the United States or a little bit less of a winter. And like I mentioned in my previous winter forecast, the fact that we're likely going to be in a westerly QBO pattern as well as an endo neutral pattern would lead, would lead me to believe that we would be in for a quarter and snowier than average winter. Because if we were to take a look at how the phases differ um, between neutral phases, whether it's an easterly QBO pattern or a westerly QBO pattern. So G1 represents a westerly QBO pattern during an Enzo neutral phase. G2 re represents the opposite, uh, the opposite an easterly QBO pattern, which by the way, is um, um, has its numbers in the negatives if you, let's say, want to read the index. On the QBO, typically when the numbers are positive, that means that the QBO has winds facing from a westerly direction. While if the the index were in the negatives, that would mean that the QBO pattern is facing to from the easterly direction. Just in case if you guys want to look at the index yourself. But based on what we're seeing right now, we are in a westerly QBO pattern. And expect to be in the neutral phase by the time we approach this winter. And that... Um, and as we see in pretty much all of the maps, wh um, whether it comes to temperature or even the geopotential height anomalies, we see that it's typically cooler than normal over much of the United States. And then when it comes to snow depth, it is a bit different. It is rather average, I'll say, for most of the United States. But based on the temperatures we're seeing, um, it would be a little bit more likely receive a little bit more snowfall than usual when the temperature is colder during westerly QBO patterns. So I do believe that will also contribute to a cooler than normal winter with a little bit more snow as well. So to conclude, it's still a bit more um, uncertain at this time. Um, I know I just went over this over a nine minute video, but there's still, um, there's still months to go. We could, who knows, maybe a drought could build right over Russia that could make it a little bit more difficult. We see an expansive amount of snow over Russia by the time we approach October. We're going to need to wait and see with that. But based on the current trends, um, trends we're seeing when it comes to precipitation anomalies right over Russia over the past few months, it seems a little bit more likely that at the very least, the snow extent won't necessarily be so far below average to where it would almost remove the chance of this winter bringing a little bit more snow than normal for the United States. I think that is out of the question 
based on the precipitation anomalies we're seeing over Russia. Um, but it's um, but I think that based on that trend we're seeing, it does lean a little bit more to the snow extent, maybe being a little bit more um, expansive than usual um, based on what I'm seeing right now. So I do think that will also contribute to a little bit more snow than usual over the United States. But yeah, guys, that's it for now. Um, and I thank you guys for watching.